Hello? We good now? All right. All right. Welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway, everyone. Glad to uh, have you here with us. We're going to kick off our media availabilities here for a Thursday afternoon. Um, we are joined now by Elliot Sadler, driver of the number one One Main Financial Chevrolet. And Elliot, um, a heartfelt uh, announcement from you this week. Um, we'll give you a few minutes if you would like to um, say anything, and then we'll just open it up for media. Um, I'm sure there are a few questions for you. So. Yeah, I appreciate that. And uh, first of all, thank you guys for, you know, letting me come in here to today and, you know, talk about my announcement. And I really appreciate all the nice um, calls and texts and tweets and uh, all those things that, that went out yesterday. I, I think the, uh, the biggest part of the announcement and, and kind of getting it, you know, off my chest and letting my fans and friends and everybody know about it is, uh, you know, that's what I'm going to miss the most. I have um, been so fortunate enough to, to, uh, create a lot of great friendships and, and have a lot of good friends through through my journey in racing and in NASCAR and got some great phone calls and text messages yesterday that uh, you know some of us were uh, shared some funny stories and we laughed and you know we had some people that we kind of shared some tears with too but um, as a as a person as a dad um, I just think the time is now to, uh, you know, to move on to the next chapter of my life. I love being around, you know, my wife and kids. Um, I love being Coach Elliott. I've already got another job, so that's cool. Um, Going to be coaching a lot of baseball in the future, and uh, and and looking forward to that chapter of my life. So um, it's a pretty easy decision for me. Um, uh, to, to move forward and, and, and I want to explain one thing, the reason why we worded it the, the way that we did uh, retire from full time racing is, you know, Kelly and I have had a lot of discussions in the last, you know, couple weeks, couple months leading up to this and, um, you know, I love Junior Motorsports to death. They've been so good to me and, and my family and, um, you know, I wanted Kelly to, to know and understand. I'm not sure what their plans are for next year as far as who's driving what car, who's doing what. I do know they want to be four teams and, uh, you know, they want to have a chance to, to go out and, and win championships. But I left it open ended just in case they needed anything. If they needed me to run a couple races here or there to maybe fill a schedule or, you know, to, to help a partner out, um, I, I would, of course, be willing to do that. But uh, my time as a as a full time driver is is coming to an end. And and um, I feel good about the decision. I, I'm, I can sit in front of you today and, and feel really good about um, where I'm at today personally and, um, and professionally, and, and we'll see what the next chapter brings us. All right. We'll take questions for Elliot. If you have one, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Jerry and then make our way around the room. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires like Matt and PRN. A year ago or so, you said that you might not be complete if you hadn't won that championship. How do you feel going into this, knowing that you're chasing that championship right now? You know, that's a really good question. And, um, you know, I definitely want to win a championship. Um, you know, that's what I have strived for my whole career is, is to win a, a championship in NASCAR. And, man, have we come close. And, you know, I'm not going to bore you with, you know, all the stats or whatever that shows. Um, but I felt like I've put my best foot forward and, I'm, and we're trying to do that again. And that's why I wanted to make this known earlier rather than later. So when it gets playoff time, we can focus on the playoffs. And uh, so that was one reason why we wanted to try to, um, you know, get, get this news out as soon as we can. Um, so if we don't win a championship, yes, uh, it will, it'll bother me. It'll, it'll be some sleepless nights over that. But I feel like I have pursued my dream long enough. And, um, you know, I was telling Chris the other day, I was, um, you know, I almost feel selfish the last couple of years that, you know, it's, it's about me pursuing my dreams. It's about me racing to win races or win championships when I have two kids that are thoroughly involved in different things in their life. And I think I've been selfish long enough. You know, that's one final push for a championship, but I want to help them pursue their dreams, you know. So I think it's, uh, you know, we're going to win, lose, or draw. We're going to put our best effort forward, but it's more important to me to be involved in what they're doing and being part of their life right now to achieve their dreams than it is to to, to keep pursuing my own. I, I've given myself enough time to 
to try to win a championship. But now it's time to um, now it's time to put my dad hat on, you know, and, and kind of help them. Right, You're welcome. Bob. Bob Pachris, ESPN. First, I wanted to clarify something. Yep. Are you open to racing for anybody, any series, if somebody needs a select driver, or is it strictly Xfinity and strictly Junior Motorsports? That's, uh, so I've been approached uh, by a couple different teams uh, to race for them next year, and I have uh, respectfully declined at this moment because um, I told Kelly they've been so good to me, I'm not – turning my back on them right now it's I'm, I'm here just in case they need I hope they don't need me I hope they they get everything buttoned up for whatever they need that's best for their company uh, but if they need me to come races to run for them Bob that that's what I want to do I'm not really taking any offers from anywhere else to go do anything else look I, I got a great situation right now with good people and if it's if I had to leave on a this kind of note, like a high note, I'd rather do it with with, with good friends of mine than trying to go do something else. And did the one main's decision kind of start these thoughts in your mind, or were you already thinking about this at the start of the year? So I was I've kind of been thinking about this at the start of this year because we knew this was the last year of, of of contract stuff. So my wife and I had talked about this a lot, and Kenny Cross White that's that's here every weekend. We had prayed about it a lot. Um, but I think that went into the decision some um, when when one main you know announced that um, uh, you know they had just been bought out and doing something else. Kelly and I had had those meetings and it was all right. You know what are we going to do? We can let's let's you know Kelly was so open about it was hey let, we can still sell you we can still run full deal we've got great partners that will come in and sponsor you and I just was like Kelly you know what let's um, let let me think about this for a while I really. Uh, I'm at the next chapter of my life where uh, my son and daughter's life is uh, more important to me than, than what I do on the racetrack. So I kind of told her that, you know what, put, put your focus and your energy on, you know, a, you know, a new driver or a new partner or something to come in here and really, really help Junior Motorsports move on, um, you know, into the future. So um, it might have been a small part of it, but I still think I had a chance to, to still race and race full time, e even with those guys stepping away. But um, I just feel like personally, Bob, that, you know, I, I want to do something else. All right, Jacob, go ahead. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Uh, Elliot, you see, I, I can look at you and see how at ease you are with this decision, but knowing that you've been driving for such close friends the last couple of years, that conversation with Kelly and with Dale, if he was involved, I'm sure he was. What was the toughest part about that conversation for you? Well, I wanted to make sure I wasn't letting them down, you know. And I think Dale just going through his kind of retirement deal that he kind of could relate. And he's just now having his little girl. And so he could relate. And Kelly, got it, it doesn't get any better. Uh, owners in the garage than them too and, and Mr. Hendrick as well but Kelly could relate to you know she has a Wyatt at home she has Carson that races <laughs> all the time all over in the sprint cars she's got late models running at certain racetracks on Saturday night and Xfinity cars running on Saturday here it's so hard to be in so many places so they could relate to the feelings I was having so uh, they were really easy to talk to but I, the, the toughest point is I think the toughest part is when uh, the first conversation we had, I didn't want them to think I was, you know, jumping ship on such a great company. And they got so many great employees, and I love those guys to death. So that was the toughest point, just to make sure that they knew where I was coming from. And a championship notwithstanding, when you look back on all the time you've spent in this series and in NASCAR in general, what do you take away from your journey, whether it's a particular moment or just something overall? I think it's the friendships, man. You know, I, um, you know, I'm from a very small town in Emporia, Virginia, and my dad took me to races when I was a kid, and I was on the other side of the fence. And and I, um, I got to cherish those moments um, as a fan. And I think earlier in my career, I really took for granted being on this side of the fence, being in the garage. I just thought, yeah, I'm here. You know, I deserve to be here, and I really didn't take it all in. I think now looking back. And holy cow, the text messages and calls and stuff I got yesterday from crew members, pit crew guys from past seasons back to when I drove at Diamond Ridge 20 years ago. 
um, the friendships of what I'm going to miss the most, and that's what I cherish the most. I, I got some really good friends that I would have never, ever met if I wasn't involved in the sport. So to me, it's not about the statistics. It's really not about me in victory lane. It's about getting certain people into victory lane, like the Wood Brothers here at Bristol for the first time in their uh, career. Those are the memories I, I will remember the most and, and will cherish the most, of course. All right. I believe we have Nate, Kenny, Chris, and then we have one more. Yep. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Elliot, so your news is followed this morning by the news of Casey Kane stepping away, and this has been a wave of retirements over the last three years. There's a maybe an eight or ten year window where a lot of you guys entered are now leaving. Do you think that's the reason for it, or is it also something more, some sort of trend? Because drivers in the past tend to have raced into their fifties, and everybody seems to be retiring now, like late thirties, early mid forties. Is there something about NASCAR's change? That's that's a good question, man. And and I don't know the answer to that. I texted Casey this morning uh, when I heard the news. I, I'd heard a rumor yesterday that he he might retire. And um, I texted him this morning, and we shared some funny stories over the text. But he wants to – I think he wants to be around Tanner more. I think he loves being a dad. I think he's – his. you know, he has a lot of love and passion for his dirt cars and those people. Um, I don't know if it's really one thing. I mean, NASCAR is a grueling schedule. It's a long schedule. And I just think your quality of life nowadays is something maybe we're thinking more about. And – I'm sure there's more top name guys that are going to retire in the next two or three years, and I don't know what that does for NASCAR, but I, I can't speak to everybody else's reasons. Um, but it seemed through the text message that I had with Casey this morning that we both kind of are in the same, um, standing on the same foot where we really love our family and we want to spend time with them and we don't want to miss out on, you know, our kids growing up. And that's kind of, you know, NASCAR, you, you're on the road a lot. And, uh, and look, guys, a big part of my decision was, I'm not going to lie, this year, um, missing my kids' all-star games, making it through the districts, making it to states. I mean, I felt horrible. I didn't even – I mean, I was at the racetrack. I was miserable uh, to miss all that. And I can't really say that's because of NASCAR. It's just because I was missing what, what my kids were, you know, were doing at home. They, that's a really good question, but it's, it's hard for me to speak to what you know, are on other guys' minds when they make this decision. Kenny? Kenny Bruce, KennyBruce.net. Elliot, you're awful young to be retiring. So if you don't drive, like for JRM next year, if they say we're good, everything, is there a role in racing that you would consider that doesn't put you behind the car, or are you totally done with it? I'm uh, totally done. Um, and, and I've been asked that question a lot. And I did TV for a long time with, with speed and trackside and all those things. And, and my re, you know, remark to this is, you know, I love racing. I love being in the race car. Um, why would I still try to miss time from home and miss time from my kids coming to just talk about the race? If I'm going to miss time from home, I want to be in the seat, you know, I want because that's, that's what still drives me. So, um, like I said, I've already got a job for next year, and I'm pretty busy, and my schedule's filled up. We got a lot of stuff, work to do. I mean, we had practice last night, and then I drove up, and then I got to get back home for practice on Sunday. So, I mean, I have a lot of stuff going on at home that I want to be a part of, and um, I think it, it would not be fair to myself or my family if I left just to come do some stuff here or there. I'd, I'd rather watch it as a fan at home and – and let the guys do the TV stuff that's doing it now. Okay, one other thing real quick. Yep. Of all the texts and, and emails, people that reached out to you, any surprises? Yes, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. A guy named Bob Pomeroy called me yesterday, and y'all don't know his name, but when I very first started racing in 1990, you know, beginning of, in the 96, but really beginning of 1997, my first full season in the Xfinity Series, we had a solid white race car for Diamond Ridge Motorsports. And Bob Pomeroy came to sponsor me. He was the head guy at Phillips 66. And we had the old black and red Phillips 66 car. And we met with him, and he signed the check, and he, he was my very first ever sponsor. So he and I shared some tearful moments yesterday because, um, you know, he helped me get on the path of being a race car driver. But it's really neat to hear he called me. Uh, and then also the CEO of One Main Financial also called me yesterday to um, 
you know, congratulate me. So it was neat to kind of hear bookend sponsors and people and a lot of people in the middle as well. But it was neat to hear from Bob, somebody I hadn't heard from in over 20 years. He had called Keith Barnwell and got my number from him, who's the manager at GMS, who we were all together at Diamond Ridge um, to, to call and express his, um, you know, his gratitude. It was, it was a really neat phone call. All right, go ahead. Steve Swites of the Lasco Press. Elliot, you indicated that you were available if there was a need. Um, let's say that uh, you got a, uh, uh, is there a particular track that if you got a call um, and it was just a one race deal that you'd say, yeah, I can do that for you? No, it's, it's uh, if Kelly and them need me, I'm here, but um, it's, it's not a particular. Only thing I told them, it cannot be during June or July because that's the height of our ball season. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> We, uh, you know, and I know I keep bringing that back up, guys, but listen, um, you know, when my son was born, there's a lot of complications. You know, doctor tells us, don't know really what he can and can't do, and um, his, uh, uh, he's not going to be very coordinated. You know, he's not going to be very athletic because he's in the NICU for so long. His muscles are not going to be developed. You know, all these negative things and um he's turned out to be one heck of a ball player and uh and i want to be i want to see that through so it's funny i mean i don't look at a certain track anything it just it, it cannot be during times where my son or my daughter is playing ball and um you know they're pretty booked up at this time and we're busy and we're doing this but it's something he really loves and he has dreams and aspirations. I mean, he wants to be Aaron Judge. I mean, what kid doesn't want to be Aaron Judge? And if, if me spending more time at home can help him pursue his dream, well, that's what I'm going to do. His, after what he's been through in his life and living with a uh, life-threatening uh, food allergy, if giving up my dreams means if he can get one, I'm all for that. Let you catch your breath. Yeah. Um, Chris Knight, catchfence.com. Elliot, I know that when we talked at Chicagoland Speedway, you said while one thing, one man wasn't coming back, there might have been an opportunity for them to do a couple races. Is that still on the table or is that completely off the cards? No, that's still on the table, but like I said, it's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to turn my back on Junior Motorsports. If they need me for anything to fill a schedule, we, we have some sponsors that are sitting there ready to do it, but. Hopefully they'll get all the stuff that they need to, to make themselves a, have a good Ford car race team next year and run for the championship. What do you want the fans to remember Elliot Sadler as a driver wise? You know, one of the coolest things I think ever happened to me, and this is back in 2004, 2005, there was this huge uh, study done or questionnaire to fans. And the question was of all the NASCAR drivers, who would you want to have a beer with? And I was picked out of all the fans. And to me, that's, I, I just wanted them to know I was an ordinary guy from a small town that lived a dream racing. I don't think these young kids get it yet, how, how much of a dream this is to be able to race and do something that you love. Um, but I learned from Dale Jarrett early in my career to you know treat the fans with respect and have fun with it. It's all what you make of it. And yeah, I've had good days and bad days on the racetrack, but I just I want to be remembered from the fans that um, you know, we were pretty genuine, and to this day, I think I'm the only race car driver that I know of that's had a huge fan party at his house in his backyard with thousands and thousands of people. I don't think any other driver's ever done that. So that's pretty that's pretty cool leg to stand on, Chris, and uh, and uh, hopefully that's the way the fans will remember me, just somebody that was uh, uh, a fan himself but just happened to be on the other side of the fence. All right, we're going to take one more question from Lee Spencer, right here. For someone that partied with you at Talladega, they made the right <laughs> choice. <laughs> Thank I'll you. I'll leave it at that. Um, can you, does this kind of give you and Kevin even, not that you needed any added motivation, but having sat and seen you come into the media center at Homestead last year, is this kind of you know added motivation to the two of you to get the job done to the best i, I i'm not questioning your ability no, but I got it. Yeah. Is, is there just something added now going into the playoffs yes it is for me because i want to see my guys be successful i want to see my guys in victory lane i want to see my guys holding up a championship 
and uh, Kevin and that whole team at Junior Motorsports, the whole one team, they, they have worked their butt off the last couple of years to put me in position to win races, Lee, and to win championships. And, um, you know, I've apologized to them on more than one occasion that I didn't do my job in the car, whether it was at the end of the race or I messed up a pit stop or a restart. I want to give them that satisfaction of winning a race. It's not about me anymore. It's about my guys going to victory lane, the guys that fly in on the mornings to, to pit the car and the, and the guys that work on the car as, as crew members, but definitely Kevin. Um, I've told Mr. Hendrick and I've told Dale Jr. and I've told Kelly and everybody else around me, Kevin Mendering is, he is the man. He is really good at what he does. He's a good friend. Um, he knows what all this means to me and I know what it means to him. And we definitely have um, added motivation because we know this is it, right? We've got to swing for the fence uh, because there, there's no tomorrow for us. You know, we, we, we have to try to make this happen between now and Homestead. So we're going to try to build some momentum on our team and race hard and, and, and gather some points and hopefully go to victory lane. And, and when the playoffs start, Lee, we, we've got uh, all our eggs got to be in one basket and all the chips on the table because, you know, this is our last trip together. We thank you for coming in today and spending a little bit of time with us. And we have one more surprise for you this morning. Uh -oh. We'll even have someone else. Okay, perfect. Hey, Elliot, Kevin Stafford, Vice President of Marketing for Food City. You know, you've had a great career here at Bristol. You know, many wins, including a Food City 500 victory. And uh, on behalf of Steve Smith and our 16,000 Food City Associates, we want to honor you tomorrow night and let you give the command to start the Food City 300. So thank you. Thank you. That's a cool honor, guys. Thank you.